We got the early summer Colorado Buffs football depth chart. Shout out to uh, BuffStampede.com. I got Adam Mustard Tiger. You already know what it is as we do our show uh, each week. Uh, Buff them updates. Y'all can check that out. New York checking in. Oh, now Eric Turn. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the Colorado Buffs early summer football depth chart predictions on the defensive side of the football. And uh, once again, this is by my guy Adam. What y'all can do, because right now they have a 60% off deal on buffstampede.com. This is not a promo or an uh, ad, but official ad. But this is, uh, you can go there right now on buffstampede.com and get 60% off on your um, membership and become a VIP member like I am right here. You can also get exclusive content by joining on. So um, let's go right into it. The Buffalo's added. 26 new scholarship players on the defensive side of the football since last year. How do we see those pieces fitting in? All right. Yeah, we saw the offensive early depth chart, which I'll go over and I'll drop a video too. But it's right now, we're going to do the defensive side. We're going to start with the big guys up the middle. That's the defensive tackles. All right. And right now, this is according to Adam, and I'll give you guys my take on this. And then on Buffalo Updates, Adam and I will be discussing these things so that you uh, we can answer you guys' questions. Shout out to Francina Jones in the chat right now. Jeanette, uh, Jeanette Fox once again checking in from Texas. Dundee, Florida. And also uh, we got NY in the building, New York for sure. Appreciate you dropping the links. D. Jones. All right, so uh, – Y'all let me know who y'all think will be the starting defensive tackles. And these are to be these will be the guys who are the, the more athletic big guys. Although all of our guys are athletic on the athletic side, but these are the ones that can move, you know, over the guards, uh, play outside a little bit of technique. And that's going to be the Shane Coates, Amari McNeil, and Ryan Buell as the top three listed by my guy Adam. All right, so. He also says in his analysis, said, when was the last time the Buffs had this much depth going into the heart of the summer? There are a lot of uh, versatile defensive linemen, edge players, and even linebackers in the program. So it's challenging to peg players into a specific spot. And the front line defensively will rotate more than any other group on the team. Coach Quali did better than his stat line would suggest in 2023, while McNeil came on as the season went on. I went along to be one of the Buffs' most consistent defensive linemen. Buell is an intriguing addition from Ohio after earning third-team All-Mac honors last season. 247 Sports gave him a four-star transfer rating. So that's a defensive tackle spot. Shane Coates, Amari McNeil. Coates is a senior. McNeil is a junior. And Ryan Buell is a senior also. That's going to be a heavy competition right there at that spot. Let me know what y'all think, who y'all think will be the starters. We're going to go from there. Let me see what y'all saying in the comments. D. Jones says Shane Coates is his guy. Chidozi and Buell should start. Uh, is Shane Coates still a DT? Yeah, so Coates is listed as a defensive tackle. That's what we're going over right now, the defensive tackles. And right now, Shane Coates, number one. Amari McNeil, number two. Ryan Buell, number three. That's uh, Adam's side. My side will look, if we're using the same three players, uh, man. I like all three of these guys. I would have to really, really evaluate these guys in uh, when the pads come on. But based off what they did last year and their potential this year, the way the scheme works, I would look at it as being like this. All right. Man, Shane Coates, I really like what Coates brings uh, across the board. I really like Amari McNeil, what he brings across the board. Buell has that experience. And, um, and when he get them pads on, he might be able to jump both of these guys and be the starter. Um, it's Shane Coke's position to lose. It's Amari McNeil's to gain. If he plays to his potential, I think he's better. He, he has more tools and more talent that he can eventually be better than both of these guys. But that's saying a lot because both of these guys, is Coke's and Buell, are, are highly productive senior guys, highly intelligent, very uh, – uh, Smart guys who's going to be in their places. Shane Coates played a lot better than his stats suggested last year. So I think all three of them will play a heavy percentage of plays. 
Uh, who would be the actual starter, though? I think that's going to be up in the air. But if Big Dog had to make a list of one, two, and three, uh, man, my list is going to go uh, the number two guy would be not my number one guy. I'm going to switch it around like that. I'm going to go McNeil Cokes and Buell. I'm going to go McNeil Cokes and Buell. But uh, shoot, actually, <laughs> I might go McNeil Buell and Cokes, you know? I might go Buell, McNeil, then Cokes, you know, but I think McNeil or Buell would be my starter there. And Cokes, I'll come in and I'll use him in specific spots where he's the best at and go from there. All right. Let's see what y'all saying. Chat, Troy Blas say uh, Buell is number one. Nicholas Braxton say McNeil over Cokes. Troy Bly also said Chris Hover is no way George seats are not starting. Let me see. Chris said, I got. Zach Owens. Okay, you talk about the offensive line. We'll get that in a minute. All right. Oh, now so I'm listening. Say salute. Okay, let's get to the nose tackles here. Nose guards. Here we go. Nose tackle positions led up by Chidozi Wonko, the senior who played over 1,600 snaps last year. Well, I should say almost 1,700 at 1699. So Chidozi Wonko, the senior. Then you got Torian Carter from Arkansas. Chidozi came over from Houston. Sarion Carter came over from Arkansas. And Quinn Barnes came over from Alabama. And then Tafik Thomas came over from Louisville. Chidozi has the most experience. Uh, let me just tell you right here from Adam's wrap-up. He said, just like the previous group, these big-body defensive linemen have quite a bit of experience. One will play 1,699 defensive snaps at Houston and graded out as the top as the Cougars' second-best defender in 2023 by PFF. And Carter saw action in 33 games over three seasons at Arkansas, about 10 games a season. Barnes did not get on the field at Alabama, but he saw what winning football looks like over three seasons with the Crimson Tide, and he has fit in well since arriving in Boulder. Uh, Tafik Thomas played in 22 contests uh, at Louisville. So... Nose tackle, got some serious competition, definitely. Uh, based on the ones, Tafik is the most explosive of that list. I like that. Uh, nose tackle has crazy depth. Pancake looking crazy on one for the ones, though. We'll definitely get the pancake. All right, so we're talking about nose tackles now. Chidozi one quote. Played a lot of snaps, as you see right here. So that means that he might, uh, hopefully, it, I'll take that back. I won't say he might. I'll say hopefully he won't be have uh, so much tread off of those tires, so to speak, to where, you know, he's having to deal with injuries and things of that nature, like we saw in the spring. So if he's healthy, he has the proven tape that has shown that he can be that number one defensive tackle. He can eat up those blocks. He can take on the blocks. He can defeat blocks. He can keep them off of your defensive lineman. He's a man in that middle. And the thing is, by these four deep defensive tackles is, you only need Chidozi for two great plays. Give me two hard Chidozi plays and come out. Then I'll take two hard Tariyar Carter plays or Anquan, or Anquan Barnes plays. Or give me one pass rush from Tarfik Thomas. You know, all of these guys rotate and they're fresh when they come in. Don't you like to eat your fruit fresh or your fruit fresh, hot? You know, you know what I'm saying? You want your guys to come in fresh. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> In any capacity. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we're at right now. Let me see, Let me see what y'all saying right here in the chat. I think Thomas should be a power three uh, tech. I like our technique. I think you're trying to say. I like his ability to rest, but I guess he could be a mix with another three technique. Yeah, I think so, too. They, all of these guys, like I said, you find out where they're best at and only use them there. You don't need them doing things. Uh, you know, where it's not needed. Now, I will say this. Speaking of these guys that we just went over, that's four deep right there at the nose tackle, and then three deep right here at the defensive tackle. So we got seven guys right here across the front that we're looking at. If we're going goal line defense, where we won't use a defensive end, but we'll use all nose tackles and defensive tackles, my goal line defense will consist of if I'm going four or five, five across the front, then I would have Chidozi, Tarion Carter, Anquan Barnes, 
and then I'll go uh, Ryan Buell or or Mari McNeil or even Shane Coates there. You know, Tafika be one of my pass rush specialists uh, over the guard in the in the in the center. He'll be my inside pass rush specialist. I got big run stoppers, uh, you know, and Barnes and Carter and Shadozi, theoretically. Uh, no, no, Chidozi shouldn't. Uh, I think we have pass rusher guys who can come in. Speaking on this comment right here, we have pass rush guys that can come in. So no, no need to have Chidozi uh, in those positions where he has to pass rush. Nor Tarion Carter. I don't need you to pass rush. If I'm going pass rush now, now I got NASCAR. The only defensive tackles I'm using or nose tackles I'm using. In my pass rush, obvious pass rush positions is Amari McNeil or, or Ryan Buell. Those two guys can really pass rush. Or even Shane Coach. Shane Coach is not a bad pass rusher also. But these three guys would be uh, in more passing situations rather than any of these guys other than Big Taufik Thomas. All right? So those would be my inside pass rushers versus my inside run stoppers. Now, now let's go to the outside. We'll do the corners also. We get that. Let's go to the outside now, guys. As we did the trenches, and we get exciting as uh, we talk about these guys. See Sam Okanlola right here and what he did in the spring, and we'll go right here to BJ Green heading that group. The senior coming over from Arizona State, and from there we go to Samuel Okanlola from Pittsburgh, sophomore, and then Quincy Wiggins, former five-star sophomore from LSU. B number three with Oakland Lola number two and BJ Green. And based off of what they've done in the past, BJ Green being the most consistent or the most productive, then Oakland Lola has done this thing last year. Quincy Wiggins has probably the most po potential out of the group. So uh, Green went from a walk on at Arizona State to a scholarship player to one of the most explosive pass rushers in the country. He has the ability to play multiple techniques on the defensive line, and he has a sense of urgency with his uh, college eligibility set to run out. So expectations are high. Oakland Lola tied for Pittsburgh's team high in sacks last season, and he was training up at the end of the season uh, of his redshirt freshman campaign. Wiggins was one of the top-ranked prep prospects in Louisiana a couple years ago, and after some seasoning at LSU, he is now running with the herd. All right? So Wiggins, Oakland Lola, and B.J. Green, uh, heavy, heavy, defensive ends who can really come off the edge and pass rush. Uh, what you guys are saying in the chat is, oh, now from Richmond, Virginia. Oh, now what's happening with Buell and McNeil, clear-cut pass, interior pass rushers. Yes, indeed. The boy just said that. Who, who said that? Eric Turner. Oh, now. Let me see. Let me see if I can highlight some of you guys' comments since y'all come in on here. Uh, Anthony Steele said, being a starter on the defensive line won't be a big deal, however who's on the field doing high-stakes situations will. I like that, and I agree. So those that should come out, clear pass rush situations. Of course, you got guys who come in. I'll bring in Tafik or Buell or Mari McNeil or Shane Coates in for him. Buell and McNeil, clear cut pass rush interior guys. Oh, now for Richmond once again. Open Lola, Cheeto, Buell, BJ Green, not even close with McNeil, pass rushing it. Uh, with Buell, BJ Green on then Quincy Wiggins, Okanlola, Quincy and Green look unstoppable in practice. Okay. Having the ability to switch from speed lineups to power lineups is way more important. So, yeah, flexibility is key. All right. BJ Green. I'm going to talk about this NASCAR defensive package in the second pass rushing package. I don't think Shane Coach should start at all respectfully, Tyron said. Oh, no. All right. Let's get right into it. So, B.J. Green, Sammy Okolo, and Quincy Wiggins, all of these guys would be uh, part of my NASCAR package, whether it's the first team or second team NASCAR. NASCAR meaning the fast guys, the defensive linemen, who are the fastest ones who can get to the quarterback. So, all of them would be a part of my NASCAR with probably a defensive tackle in there like Buell or McNeil or Coates, all right, in obvious passing downs. Or I can go, I can put these guys – over the center in the guard. So you got B.J. Green lined up over the center in the guard at the nose tackle or defensive tackle. Then Oaken Lola or Wiggins lined up as the nose or defensive tackle uh, outside shaded 
of the guard, right? So then who's going to be the outside guys? You go to the outside linebacker position. You got one of the pass rush specialists, Deion Hayes, Jeremiah Brown, Nikhil Webb Walker can play outside. Also, pass rushing specialist Arden Walker, Tajay McCoy, and Keaton Wade can be pass rushers from outside. So the NASCAR package would be heavy, heavy on the pass rush. Like we saw teams last year pin their ears, ears back and get after us. That's what we can do to teams this year with the package that we have. And B.J. Green, Sammy Openlola, Quincy Wiggins. And then you add in a guy like Dalen Hayes. Oh, my gosh. Dalen Hayes and Arden Walker on the outside with B.J. Green on the inside and Wiggins. Oh. Tajay McCord coming in special situations. We should be good on the passing rush, pass rushing. And we should be good technically or, or theoretically, you know, with the substitutions. We should be good against the run, too, up front. As far as the outside linebacker position goes, number two spot, um, they have listed the outside linebacker two, outside linebacker one. We could have listed Hayes as the defensive end and Oakland Lola at outside linebacker. We could also list Brown at either outside linebacker or inside linebacker. Let's point out again to illustrate the versatility of Colorado's defensive front seven in 2024. Hayes pressured the, exactly what I was just pointing out right there. Hayes pressured the opposing quarterback 44 times last fall as a fourth-year junior, and he played in a total of 30 games with the Panthers. Of course, he'll be a senior this year. His last uh, go-around, Hayes, uh, let me see, Walker, a local product, has spent time at Missouri before transferring back home, made strides last season, and should have an impactful role this fall coming off that hand injury that kept him out of the spring. Webb Walker is a wild card in the group, and he has turned heads during the summer workout. Uh, Nikhil Webb Walker came over from New Mexico State. Jeremiah Brown from Jackson State played with Colorado last year. Dayar Hayes once again in Pittsburgh. Arden Walker, Colorado, Colorado by Webb, Missouri. Ty McCord, redshirt freshman, played with the Buffs last year. And then Keaton Wade from Kentucky. A lot of guys who you can plug out there and play. Unlike last year, I think we picked up a lot of guys who are not like projects or we hoping they can do these things. We got guys who kind of like, you know, they, they played last year. They've done some things in the past or they have high uh, potential. All right, here we go, going inside linebacker. You see my guy right here representing the 205, Birmingham, Alabama, to be exact, Jackson Nolan High School, went to Clemson, uh, got his degree and everything, uh, played last year, improved throughout the season. That's the middle linebacker, the captain, a.k.a. Unk, the leader of the bunch, Levante Bentley, the middle linebacker, the senior, number 20. He's number one on the list, but he's going to have a junior pushing him a lot this year, Nakai Hill Green. I can see both of them playing together. I think Green is a hybrid guy who can play middle, who can play wheel, who can play outside and rush. So that's, the, that's that versatility that we're going to have based off of the guys that we brought in, and he is one of those guys who is there. Listed at number two as the middle linebacker, Mike linebacker position right now behind Levante Bentley. Let me know what y'all think about that. But you got another wild card. I would say the wild card is Johnny Chainsaw Chaney coming over from FAMU. A super fast linebacker can go sideline to sideline, headhunter, bigger than what a lot of people think. We'll, we'll go get after it in the past game, can tackle in space. Johnny Chainsaw Chaney, look out for him. I think all three of these guys can play. Uh, I think all three of these guys might be able to play on uh, on on the next level and get paid for it. Whether it's XFL, NFL, CFL, these three guys can all play. Levante Bentley, Nikahil Green, and Johnny Chainsaw Cheney. All right, we go to the wheel backer, the wheel linebacker, or you might call it the weak side linebacker, or the guy who do a lot of coverage, and that is Trevor Woods, Jalen Wester, or um, Brendan. Again, and once again, I think Nikai Hill Green can also play that position. And here's his uh, analysis right here is uh, from Adam. It is hard not to list Hill Green as a starter at middle linebacker, and it's hard not, it's hard to list Cheney third on the depth chart, given what both have accomplished at the collegiate level. But Bentley was arguably the Buffs' most improved defensive player throughout the course of 2023 campaign. He tied for the team uh, lead in sacks. Woods is a hybrid that is a proven playmaker on defense. 
with Wester being the vocal voice in the locker room and Gant also having a great deal of college experience coming over from Florida State. All right. This is, uh, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, like, now, uh, you know, without even doing all the special graphics, without doing anything, looking at uh, a super huge amount of film, without doing all the extra, this is the best breakdown you're going to get and analysis you're going to get right here. Let me know in the chat what you think. There's another better breakdown of the whole squad of each player and knowing the players out there. Let me know. Please let me know. Because the boy had his hands on the post this whole time and been locked in this whole time. And I've been looking at these players, seeing these players, evaluating these players, got love for these players. Uh, but at the same time, I'm holding them accountable, saying what I feel and I think uh, based off the film because the eye in the sky does not lie. And anytime you watch film with real uh, football vocalists or whatever kind of sewers or, or enthusiasts, then you'll know that, hey, man, it's not going to lie on, on the film. So why am I going to sit here and lie to you in your face? Because I like you or whatever. So let's move on to the cornerback spot. That is Preston Hodge right there. Cornerback one. All right. Of course, we got Travis Hunter listed as the cornerback number one. Number two, Preston Hodge. I'll explain why they have it listed like this in a second. Number three, Ivan Yates. And then cornerback two, DJ McKinney, Coach and Hood. And then Ivan Yates once again without listing all of the newcomers like uh, Angel Lopez, like Malachi Murphy, uh, and a few other guys that we have, walk-ons and newcomers, and even Namir Robinson uh, not listed on here. But these are just the, out of these five guys right here. This is how it's broken down. Let me tell you what Adam said which is Hunter, Hodge, and McKinney emerged as the top three cornerbacks during spring ball with Hunter and Hodge also working at nickelback. The plan is for Hunter to shadow the opposing team's most talented receiver so he would move around accordingly. Hodge was a top defender for Liberty, which had an undefeated regular season in 2023 before transferring to Boulder uh, in 2023, before transferring to Boulder. But McKinney, was a star on the rise at Oklahoma State before jumping to another program in the new Big 12. Hood also enjoyed a strong season with the Tigers of Auburn before changing addresses. Yates is a wild part of the position, providing quality depth as a transfer from Furman, who started all the games he played in. So a lot of talent at the cornerback position also. Colton Hood from Auburn, DJ McKinney. So the reason why they have them listed like this, right, as cornerback one and cornerback two, it could be, you know, left cornerback uh, or right cornerback or whatever, but it's going to be three cornerbacks on the field. That'll be Travis, Preston, and DJ as of right now. Coach and Hood can make a case and say, hey, man, I could be that starter at nickel or I could be that starter outside and put Hodge at nickel while Travis is getting the rest, which probably won't be a lot. But I think Coach and Hood is going to be able to work his way in that. And guess who's raising his hand in the back and like, I got something to say about that. That's Ivan Yates. He has something to say about that. As this guy has uh, proven skills playing that Furman last year, um, I saw his – from what I saw on, on, on footage, he has uh, a great feet, great size for the position, six feet. Um, uh, can really go out there to get the ball, aggressive cornerback, but very smart. Uh, reads the quarterback, can play zone and man coverage, which this squad, this defensive coordinator, will uh, ask of him to play all those things. you got to play – play press definitely which he loves to do has long arms can really do that uh at the cornerback position so travis hunter president hodge ivan yates dj mckinney and coach and hood will be my top five cornerbacks on the squad right now who you'll see a lot of this year now you go to nickelback and it's pretty much the same thing while i just broke down but then adam added in cameron silver craig which uh based off of these guys how i just broke it down we won't see – I don't think we'll see a lot of Silver Craig playing the nickel. Uh, you might see him playing that star position, which is in the same type area as the nickel, but you'll know that because you'll see an, another two safeties on the field. Uh, at the uh, nickelback, it'll be another cornerback on the field while you'll see Silver Craig more maybe off the ball or something like that. So let's go. Uh, we're going to go past that as Travis Hunter, Preston Hodge, Cameron Silver Craig would name – Let's go to the safety spot with Shiloh Sanders. And Adam has Shiloh listed as the strong safety. I like to listen as the free and Craig as the strong, but that's interchangeable. 
as Sanders, as he said here, Sanders has not been a floor participant during early summer strength and conditioning work. But until we hear otherwise, we have to operate with the assumption he will be ready to go for the season opener. Silver Craig is also an established playmaker, whether he is at safety or nickelback. Riley had some run with uh, Miami's first team defense this spring before making a move to Boulder. Stop Miles showed uh, well as a true freshman at cornerback before moving over to safety, the position his father played in the NFL. That is uh, the safety spot. That's going to sum up the defense, but we'll go over this depth chart right here. It's R.J. Johnson, who I like a lot, came over, redshirt freshman from Arkansas, listed at the bottom of the list, probably just because he's a redshirt freshman, but he's a kid that has a lot of potential who could probably jump Travis J. if Travis J. is not stepping up or doesn't feel like he's completely healthy. But if he is completely healthy, you might see Travis J. on the field because um, – a lot of people might look at the one-on-one and say, ah, da, but I I know that Travis Jay can make plays uh, when the ball is definitely in front of him. He can come up and be a thumper. Carter Stockmire, I just think just continue to just play. Needs more snaps uh, to get that experience, but a guy who has a lot of talent, a great size, ability, and the want to, got that dog mentality. But uh, the main man on this defense as far as safety goes um, – and if you're not talking about Shiloh Sanders, then you're talking about Cameron and Sid McCray out of Birmingham, Alabama, another 205 project um, playing with Coach Prime and uh, next to Shiloh Sanders. I would say he's the head of the game, uh, at least vice president. <laughs> if Shiloh the CEO, then he's the CFO, you know, the chief financial officer. He's making everybody pay coming across that middle, dog. So Shiloh backed up by Savion Riley and Herman Smith the third. Herman Smith going to make a lot of plays on on that special teams. If Shallow is out at any time, you'll see Smith come in uh, and Riley play a lot also. He played at Vanderbilt and at the University of Miami. Throw the U up. Shout out to the U. All right. I'm going to give a few shout outs to everybody in the chat right now. We got over uh, 200 plus people in here just on, on, on YouTube, should I say. Let's see here what y'all got to say. What, don't forget about Cam Michael that cornerback too. Exactly. Cam Michael can play corner also. Good point right there. But I don't think any other freshmen were listed on here right now. Hit that like button, TG said. What's good, big dog Chico? PC Alabama in the building. You already know. Phoenix City. Well, if I'm not mistaken, right? It is Phoenix City, right? Uh, we have a lot of depth in secondary. See, the thing is about this chart right here, dog. Everybody I named or everybody listed on this chart looks like, you know, they can play, man. They can play. Everybody can play. Everybody can be on the field at some point this season. That's the difference with this uh, with this depth chart this year. Last year I was looking at the chart and I was like, uh, you know what, he's a project. Uh, you know what, he won't play this year. Uh, he needs to get bigger. He needs to get stronger. Uh, he's a tweener. Um, he's going to have to play here this year out of position to help this team. So he's not going to be as good. So this year, though, you got guys who can rotate in and be in there for that specific uh, a skill set. You know, put your city in your state in the chat. Uh, hit the like for the algorithm for your boy. Put your city in your state in your, or your country in the chat. and Hit the like for your algorithm to make sure that you get to see this. Next time I go live, if you ever had a problem with understanding or knowing when I go live and it's not showing that that's probably because you didn't hit the like button in the past to show the algorithm that hey I like this content right here what uh big dog is producing. Will H said injuries will mean most likely everyone get in if a champion if it's a championship season. Yeah you can count on there being some injuries this year definitely. So I like the depth that we have from RJ Johnson to Cameron Sim Craig all can play. Hermes, Bill Shallow, all can play. Uh, Camera, all can play. Right here. All can play. Pass experience, pass experience, pass. All can play, can play, can play. Talent. Coming off an injury, can play, can play. Can really play, can play, can play. All of them got talent. These guys just need opportunity, just need opportunity. Same thing here, can play. Did this thing, did this thing. So the talent is there. 
we just got to put this all together and make the best out of it. You feel me? A few more comments coming in. I appreciate the super chats and everything. Reverend BJ Nelson said, you, see, you already know what it is. Throwing up the dub for the West Side Bay Area checking in. San Fran, oh, now to you out there on the West Coast, baby. Because I'm out here on the far west, out here in Hawaii right now. Out here in the middle of the Pacific, getting ready to head to the beach. Going to take the, the little ones to the beach. I want to say a happy Father's Day to anybody listening in out there. Y'all put a happy Father's Day in the chat right now. Sheldon Johnson said 314 St. Louis in here. I think the trenches is ready to go to war when the season starts. We're ready, uh, ready to see it, definitely. Eric Turner said, BJ Green looks angry and focused, looks like a monster season coming from him. Right, had 13 sacks, I think, last year. And he's coming for nothing but the blood this year, dog. He, he's, he, he got his eyes on the prize. He's focused in what he came to Colorado to do. No playing around. He said, other people can talk and entertain the camera. I'm here to play football, and I like to hear that. Happy Father's Day, everybody out there. Big 2-1 said, y'all already know what it is. Shout out to my players and playettes. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, that's what it is. You from Milwaukee, so I already know you got that got that pee up in you. You feel me? Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day weekend. Get your barbecue on. Go do something good for your father. Uh if my pops is listening right now as he usually is, happy Father's Day to you. You know I'm gonna hit you up later on. Give you a call if it's not too late. I'll definitely hit you tomorrow though. Uh my hot take has been all alone that D line improvements are gonna be Way more important compared to where we were last year for Shiggity. For sure. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's the biggest dog. Chico to the scene, the place to be. Coming to teach you live and direct. I'm back like bird of brains. Shouts out to my dogs. And uh, shouts out to Naughty by Nature. You know what I mean? Um, I think I have a story to tell, but maybe I'll do it on my offensive breakdown. Any questions out there before I get up out of here? If Colorado can stop the run, look for them to be an elite team this year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, we got a super chat coming true. Or is that a new member? A new member to the program, Sharon Laverne Fuller said, oh, now from the great state of Texas, she checking in. Hey, man, if you haven't hit the like button yet, hit the like button for the algorithm. If you haven't hit the join button, you can join my channel, do something to support your page, support your favorite channel on YouTube, get you an old nice shirt, get you a, uh, uh, any type of merch you can get, get you a Big Buffs t-shirt if you want. Also, you can uh, hit the donation, donation for the cash app right there to Speed Hustle TV. That is me, Speed Hustle TV. Or if you want to advertise your business or anything that you're doing out there, go right here. And uh, hit me up on on uh, on uh, email big dog chico at gmail and get your ad up there in the corner where I'll read it off and I'll say your website just like I'm saying mine right down here. Go get you some merch. Get you some merch. Big dog chico dot myspreadshop dot com and get you some. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? P Holland, we're gonna be back with some more. I appreciate you liking this breakdown. We're gonna be back with some more on an offensive breakdown coming up soon all right so share this thing like this thing hit me on facebook also big dog chico sports talk on facebook live and direct right now if you haven't heard let's go big let's go home what you waiting on let's get it in it's the biggest dog chico to the scene the place to be i'm gonna be up and about this thing right now oh now to my haters <laughs> y'all already know what to do hit the like subscribe comment peace in the middle show y'all